Hey everyone, so in this video we are going to be starting with uh, loop control in C and uh, loops are basically just executing uh, some set of statements which uh, are going to be the same uh, and we want these to be executed over and over again so let's say I want you to print uh, all numbers from 1 to 10 uh, actually writing 10 printfs is uh, a pretty tiresome job so we are going to be looking at um, something to make this easy um, and there are actually three types of loops in C uh, there's a while loop there's a for loop and there's a um, do while loop so these are three kinds and the first one that we'll see is the while loop um, I think it's the uh, easiest to understand so let's just first create a var actually um, alright let's just create a variable here and uh, the variable i is um, often used as a loop counter so uh, I've created an a variable i which uh, holds one right now and what I'm going to do here is say while um, i is less than or equal to 10 um, and again uh, pay attention to the syntax it's uh, exactly the same as an if so uh, the while is followed by a parenthesis containing um, a condition and uh, the braces define the block of the while loop so here uh, I'm just going to do a printf and I'm going to do um, a person d and a backslash n here and I'm just going to print i and the next step that I want to do is um, i equals i plus 1 so uh, what's going to happen here is uh, first i is going to be set to 1 then uh, it'll come here um, it'll say while i is uh, less than equal to 10 so it says is i less than or equal to 10 and because it's 1 it's true so it actually goes inside this while loop and inside this while loop it prints out i and then i becomes 2 and uh, when it hits this closing brace for a while loop it actually goes back to here and uh, it checks this condition again and um, because i is 2 this condition is true again and it's going to go inside the while loop so uh, that's how it's going to work and um, when i actually becomes 10 uh, what happens is this condition is still true uh, 10 is less than or equal to 10 is true so it goes ahead and prints i but now i becomes 11 um, however uh, remember that after i becomes 11 uh, it actually hits this brace here so uh, it goes back right here and checks this condition so um, uh, this condition now gives us false and then it gets out of the while loop and it comes right here um, and sees a return 0 and a return 0 means the end of the program so that's what it does but what I wanted to point out was this condition is going to be checked uh, all the times that it is true plus one time because then it's false so uh, that's something to remember so in this case it's going to be checked when it's 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 and 10 and then it's also going to be checked an 11th time when i is 11 so uh, let's just go ahead and uh, try running this um, And as you can see, I got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 here. So uh, that's what the while loop did for us. And uh, I can change this to uh, less than and make this 11. It would uh, have the same effect. Um, so that's about it for the while loop. Actually, uh, let me just point something out here. So uh, this thing actually is uh, pretty long writing i equals i plus 1 so there are actually a lot of shorthands to do this the first one is to just write i plus equals 1 
um, that's perfectly valid too and I can show it to you right here it compiles fine and it actually even runs fine uh, it gave me 1 to 10 the same result and um, another shorthand is uh, to use just I++ um, or plus plus I and we'll talk about the difference between these sometime later but I can actually just write an I++ here and uh, this compiles fine too um, so these are shorthands to say I equals I plus one uh, the primary advantage with this one is that uh, instead of a one you can give uh, some other number as well so if you just wanted to print let's say even numbers you could give a plus equals two here but you can't do that here because uh, it just gets incremented by one so uh, that's something that I wanted to point out and uh, this shorthand is something we're going to be using a lot of times in the for loop so uh, the way a for loop uh, works is um, I just write for I uh, actually I don't even need this here I can just have a variable uh, the for loop uh, the parentheses of a for loop actually has three parts to it the first one is an assignment um, so I assign the value 1 to I and then I check the condition and uh, remember these are separated by semicolons here so uh, the third part to a for loop is uh, the increment statement um, that's i plus plus and again within braces i write the body of the for loop um, so uh, this statement right here the assignment is going to be run only once um, the condition is again going to be run 11 times um, and the increment is uh, also going to be run multiple times let's see exactly how many times it's run but uh, what happens when it comes to a for loop is it does the first part then it checks the condition um, even though it has just assigned one to i it still checks the condition and uh, if the condition is true it goes into the for loop and as soon as it hits the ending brace of a for loop it goes right back to the condition uh, remember it goes back to the condition and not the assignment again uh, otherwise it would just be um, an infinite loop uh, actually not even the condition when it hits the ending brace it actually goes to the increment statement right here and um, then it goes to checking the condition so sorry about that but here I just need a printf and a person d backslash n and i here and uh, remember that I don't need to do an i plus plus here because that's already being taken care of by the for loop itself so uh, let's just go ahead and um, clear this out and compile this so as you can see I've got the exact same result I got numbers from 1 to 10 and um, remember that there's no semicolon here uh, you could actually move this brace to the next line if you're more comfortable with that um, but there's no semicolon here uh, just remember that and um, there's something very interesting that um, I do a lot of times but uh, for a start don't uh, do this I would uh, definitely not recommend it for the start but let's just get rid of the printf here um, so again if you remember what I told you about the if statement is that if uh, you forget to give the braces it's just the first line here that's uh, considered part of the uh, block of the if uh, statement and uh, it's the same for the while or the for statement um, if you forget to give the braces here or if you just don't give them for whatever reason uh, it's only the very next line which um, is inside the block of the for loop so if I write something like this um, and I write a printf here um, irrespective of whether I indent this or not um, let's say I do this and I compile it now um, what happens is it prints hello 
10 times and it just prints high at the very end because uh, this statement is not part of the for loop at all so uh, that's something that I wanted to point out and uh, coming back to telling uh, something really interesting what happens if I just add a semicolon here uh, let me just clear this and um, it just does nothing um, but uh, it's actually something valid um, let's say I do something like this um, and I compile it it actually compiles all right so it's uh, not invalid to do that and uh, as you can see it just printed hello once so uh, the reason for that is by adding a semicolon here uh, I've just said that this for loop does not have a body um, and this printf is outside the body of the for loop um, the reason I might want to have a for loop without a body is uh, something that I do a lot of times but um, at least for uh, your first uh, time programming at least for the first few months avoid doing this um, I can actually write a printf right here I give a person d backslash n here and uh, Take note that this is the increment part of the for loop um, and here the number that I want to print is an i and I just add a plus plus here and um, let's just go ahead and try this out. Um, so this actually gives me a perfectly good result and um, let me just uh, talk about this plus plus uh, right here. So what this plus plus means is that uh, the value, the existing value of i is what should be used in uh, this statement and i should only be incremented after it has been used. So uh, what happens is the first time i is equal to 1 and then it checks whether uh, i is less than 11. Yes it is less than 11. It tries to go into the body of the for loop. Uh, the for loop doesn't have a body it hits this semicolon and it comes to the increment statement and instead of just an increment statement I have an entire printf here so uh, for this printf i is still 1 now and the value 1 is what's used here and only after the value 1 has been used i becomes 2 so uh, basically just remember i++ plus plus as uh, use first increment later but if I have something like plus plus i let's see how that makes a difference um, as you can see I've got values from 2 to 11 here and the reason for that is because uh, the plus plus i stands for uh, increment first use later so what happens is i is first 1 then it checks whether i is less than 11 um, yes it is so it tries to go into the body of the for loop and uh, the for loop doesn't have a body it hits the semicolon comes to the uh, increment statement right here and uh, instead of an increment we have an entire printf so for this printf uh, it actually sees that it needs to print an integer and what's the integer that it needs to print that's plus plus i so because we have the plus plus before i it means it needs to increment first so it increments i to 2 and then uses it in the printf so in the first iteration itself it, it's 2 that's getting printed so that's something that I wanted to point out and um, I think this video has already been uh, pretty long I'll discuss the do while loop in uh, the next video but I just want you to remember that uh, the while loop and the for loop are just different for us but uh, behind the scenes these work exactly the same so there's no particular speed advantage or anything when using either one of them and everything that can be done with a while loop can be done with a for loop as well and everything that can be done with a for loop can be done with a while loop as well uh, the only times when we uh, prefer to use one over another is when uh, we know how many times we want some statement to be uh, executed that's when we prefer the for loop so in this case we know that it's uh, 10 times that we want this loop to run so we use a for loop 
uh, a for loop just appeals better uh, to us uh, over a while loop but if we want to do something like um, j uh, some condition where we don't know if uh, when the uh, condition will become true then we use a while loop for example let's say we are reading a file so uh, we may just say while uh, the end of file has not been reached so in that case a while loop actually appeals more but otherwise you can do uh, anything with either one of them and uh, we'll discuss a for loop in the next video so stay tuned for that